Hi there, in this uh, video I'm going to just be going over a quick little table of uh, a bunch of different shapes and where to find their centroids. So uh, the first one is probably the most obvious for everybody is uh, a triangle. And a triangle can look like, uh, you know, an equilibrium triangle. It can look like, you know, a right angle. It can look really awkward looking. You can have something like this. And uh, just so you know, all of these will be, will react the same way. And that is that you can just look at one of the sides at this little length right here, say Y, or Y, um, and what you can say is, okay, that centroid is going to be at Y bar. What fraction of y is that going to happen? One thing to realize is that the centroid will always lie along this line, along this line, along this line, just splitting the triangle in half. It's always going to be in there because it's symmetrical. Uh, uh, it's not symmetrical all the time, but I'm just saying it, it's... Um, that is the centroid of the weight, if that makes sense. Like the the half of the weight is on one side, half of the weight is on the other. It's not a, it's not symmetrical, but it is the halfway point. I'll say. Um, so that actually merits since you can go from any point and draw a line, whether it's you know from the bottom right point or bottom right point or the bottom left point, doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, you can kind of, you can pick your, pick your poison and decide which way to go. So, um, the equation though, to find the y bar, so essentially how far down is it, is going to be y divided by 3. y divided by 3. Now y is the total height, that's right here. That's how you're going to find Y bar. So it's only, it's essentially two thirds of the way down. So it's, or one third of the way from the base. That's all you need to remember. And uh, to find the area of a triangle, I mean, this one is uh, obvious. I, I should have base on here somewhere. Base times Y over 2. And, uh, you know, some people, some books will use H, um, some books will use, uh, you know, X at the bottom. It just, Pick whatever you would like, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And uh, let's move on to the next one. We could do some like little quarter circles and such. What about this shape? By the way, the centroids are going to be around there. This shape is always going to be, it's going to be somewhere in here, and just call this y bar, and call this x bar. What you're going to find is that the x bar of this one is going to be 4r all over 3 pi. Now I'm not going to go through how to derive these, but it's actually pretty, I mean, it can be pretty simple if you if you just use a couple of little um, trig identities and such, so I'm not going to walk us through that though. I want us to know how to utilize these. So quite literally, this can be used as a reference table. Um, just going on to another shape, uh, I know that there's, just pretend like this is a semicircle, an actual circle, not an ellipse. Um, your x bar, which would be whatever half the r is, right? So I guess it, it, it depends where your reference point is. If you make your reference point from here, though, if you make the reference point from you know, the center of the circle, uh, where the whole circle would be, 
then I guess our x bar would be zero, and because the centroid would be right there. But you would still have the same y bar. And this is going to be obviously just two times the one above, so divide by two. Let's keep going. What if things aren't perfect? What if things are not perfect? Let me put y bar in here. What if they are uh, an ellipse or something like that? So we could say, what if we have a shape that's kind of like this? weird looking thing. Um, just here's an arbitrary centroid that uh, we would say and my y bar would be here and my x bar would be here right but a is right there and b is right here Good. So now that we have kind of all the dimensions labeled, you can see how you can kind of just fit this into any situation you would like. Um, for instance, you would have 4a all over 3 pi. And it's actually the same thing, just with a b. And just so you know how to get the area, this, these equations can be kind of useful if you are, you know, working up a, a trying to find a total area of something or something or whatnot. So, um, you know, it, it, I'll just skip over the semi-circle uh, ellipse or because that's just going to be something similar. Uh, why don't we just do a quick quadratic function, we could do that. Now let's just do this quick little polynomial right here. You'll see a lot of these um, because there's a lot of filleted equipment. So I just pretty much model everything in the sense of kx squared. I model everything like this even though it may be off. You're going to have your x position. And, uh, of course, you know, let's just call this, uh, well, we can call it h this time. Call this one y. Or something like that. And what you're going to find with your x bar is that 3a all over 4 is going to be where your x bar is. 3h all over 10 is where your y bar is, and ah divided by 3 is your area. And the funny thing is, for a lot of you that were struggling with how to do antiderivatives, it would have been nice to know that little area uh, back in calculus, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I think we might be able to fit some. Um, Let's just give you a little general form. I, I like to have this. Um, if you have the same kind of thing, and you can just do y equals kx to the n power. I don't. I don't necessarily just use the same um, the same notation as the one above. I don't necessarily think that you need to go this far for all practical purposes, but. If it was something pretty extreme, then it might be nice to know. Like if it was like x to the tenth power or something ridiculous. And n plus 1 over, I think it's 4n plus 2h. And then you have ah all over n plus 1. And this is, um, these are all pretty commonly known topics or, or, or centroids. I mean, you could determine any of these just from a quick little geometry, uh, you know, examination, and you'll figure it out. So let's, um, let's actually hit some examples. I think we might feel a little bit more comfortable with a few examples. So see you in the next one.